welcome back to another video. Last time I took various Pokemon designs and turned them into Sonic characters. This time around I'll be doing the same but instead of Pokemon I'll be doing it with Digimon. Digimon is another franchise that I absolutely adore and has been a big influence in my love for drawing big beefy Anthro characters. So without further ado, let's get to drawing. First up, I'll be going for Weregururumon. Okay, so to start off with, it's uh, the usual process. I'm going in with a very rough sketch with a very soft brush, just doing it in a basic gesture pose. I think I looked up a reference of Weregururumon and there was some artwork of Weregururumon in this pose. So I basically took this pose and used that as a base to redesign it as a Sonic character. As for the face design, I kind of combined the sharper edges of Shadow the Hedgehog with the fluffiness of Tails. I decided to make the teeth a bit more jagged to kind of make him look a little bit more feral. And so for the 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 hair or the extension of the fur i went a bit more sonic inspired but instead of it being all like pointy uh sharp angles i kind of made them a bit more curved typically sonic characters don't wear clothing unless it's a female design don't ask me why it's just always been the way but i thought wegarurumon does not look complete without the iconic uh baggy pants And here I'm just going in with a different colored pen, different color brush, just to highlight areas that I will probably want to do in a different layer, extra little details like the belts, some little buckles and knee pads and stuff. Digimon have always been a bit extra in that they always have extra bits of armor, bits of leather and stuff, extra decals. But I also decided that the ear was too small, so I went ahead and made it bigger. Did it more based on the Wagaru Ramon shape. It's a bit more of a, a pointier, longer ear. Kind of more like a diamond shape. So going in, highlighting the markings with a red pen. So now we're going in with the line art. Locking in those shapes that I did in the sketch layer. Going in with the shoulder pads and the spines on the, I guess the knuckle dusters? I don't really know. Digimon always seems to be a lot more blinging. Like I say, Digimon have always been a bit extra with their designs, but I love them for it so much. While we're here talking about Digimon, shout out to the classic series, Digimon Adventures. Uh, my all-time favourite series though has been Digimon Tamers. I recently found the original Japanese version of that show and started watching it without the weird censorship that the English dubs tend to have. And it was such a good show. So dark and almost horror-esque. I highly recommend watching it if you haven't seen it or if you want to relive the nostalgia of Digimon but once where to start, I'd say give Tamers a watch, highly recommend it. I kind of selfishly picked some of my favourites in this. Uh, the only one that I don't think you'll see is Leomon, which is my top favourite. I didn't draw him, unfortunately. Maybe for a future video. If, if you want to see a part two of me drawing more Digimon, and same goes with Pokemon as well, let me know. So with me and Sonic character, they've got to have rad shoes. So I decided to invent my own shoes with this and gave in like little spideys. I think Wegarumon in the show typically just has big 
bare feet with red claws, but you don't really see Sonic characters with bare feet, so I decided to design him with shoes. I think I had in mind that they had boots, but I wanted to keep the the spikes that were going on with some of the other parts of the drawing. So it's very Werehog inspired. I think a lot of this is, is Werehog inspired. I recommend looking up gameplay of Sonic Unleashed. It's uh, a game that I quite enjoyed in the Sonic franchise. It's the game that followed on from Sonic 06. It's nothing like Sonic 06. If anything, it was a nice comeback after a disaster that was Sonic 06. Highly recommend it. It's not the greatest game. It had, probably hasn't aged very well, but it was still fun. I'm just selecting the outer areas of the character and then inverting the selection and then filling in the the background colour of the character using that as a base layer and then all the other layers that follow will be different colours that go on top of the character but it'll be on a like a clipping mask layer so those colours will never go outside of that area that I coloured in. This means I can kind of freehand it a little bit and not worry too much about going outside the lines or having to erase lines that overflow. I said this in the last video, I don't tend to use the dropper tool for picking colours on characters. I could easily load up a picture of where Guru on just select colours with a dropper tool. I prefer to just have the character on another screen and then just try and pick the colours by eyeballing it. Just interpret the colours in my own way and I find that usually means that you get a bit more of my own, your own creative flair out of it. No one's going to notice if a colour's slightly off and if you're keeping it with a, a certain warmth or coolness or, or a tone, that can sometimes help. So we're just blocking in those markings using the sketch layer as a guide on where to put those markings. I try to keep the jaggediness that you get from Sonic characters. They, they often have very spiky joins with fur patterns and stuff. Trying to keep it true to that style, but it, it translates quite well with the Digimon design as well, because he's quite, quite a sharp, pointy character anyway. Decal of the eyes, just going in with a darker colour, changing the translucency. Then yeah, I'm doing like a glow effect for the highlights on the eyes. I'm just going in, patching up some little bits and pieces that I might have missed. And I decided that uh, I wanted to include the claws. Most Sonic characters wear gloves, but I just thought Wegaru will look more complete with the uh, with the, the the little accented claw colour. I also decided against the red for the spines in the end and went for like just more like an off sort of lighter brown tone instead. Done the flat colours. Next, we move on to doing the shading. Um, if you watch the Pokemon video, this is a fairly standard process at this point. So basically, emulating the colouring style that you would normally see on the box art for the likes of Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Advance games. So it involves going in with a shaded colour and then do like a bit of rim lighting. It's a colouring style that I've, I've sort of adopted when it comes to doing uh, traditional art, mainly with markers. I find I quite like highlighting an area with a darker marker but then going over it with, or, or rather highlighting an area with a lighter colour and then going alongside that colour with a darker colour and then kind of blending it together. I find it looks quite nicely. I don't do it so much in my digital stuff with the exception of doing these style swap videos. 
suppose. But yeah, it's definitely something I've kind of married up with my traditional style. Maybe that could be a future video. Maybe I could do the same redesign of Pokemon and Digimon, but do it traditionally instead of digitally. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know. I'd happily do that as well. Going in with a soft airbrush, going over those highlighted areas. It's quite an iconic look for a certain era of Sonic box art and Sonic designs and stuff, which they sometimes keep up even nowadays. Not always, but like sometimes a lot of 2D art will still have this sort of style. Now just changing the colour here a little bit to get a, a feel for like a mood. With that, that is one completed Mega Rurumon design. I quite like how it looks. I, I, I definitely think it went more feminine than I was intending to, but you know, I think it's because of the clothing to be honest. Uh, I think the, the chest fluff kind of, I maybe drew it a bit curved so it looks more like uh, uh, chest bumps. And then the, the extra clothing kind of makes it look more feminine, but honestly, if it's a female Wegarumon, it could be a female Wegarumon. I don't mind. The gender wasn't really the goal here. It was just to recreate the design. I think I captured that perfectly. Next up, we've got a absolute classic in the form of Relamon. So once again, starting with a basic gesture. I think I took another piece of art of Relamon official art in a pose that I quite like the look of. I sort of changed it slightly just to make it a bit more original. Um, where the, one of the hands is, the one that's on the ground, it was actually the tail flowing down between the, between the, the legs. I decided to make it a hand instead, and uh, move the tail uh, to the other part of the body. I think originally the arms were just both upwards. With this, I was basing it loosely on Blaze the Cat. I wanted to keep those ears fairly long because like, like the Wagaru by design, Renamon also has quite long pointy ears and I quite like that look. I always draw my fingers quite rectangular, I've noticed, but I quite like that style. Also for the gloves, uh, I decided to keep the big long arm sleeves that the Renamon design has. Absolutely love this pose. Tried to create a bit of foreshortening with the foot as well. And I decided to make the gloves fingerless. I think that might have been based on the actual Renamon design. The, the arm down a little bit just so again adds that foreshortening just to create a bit of depth with the, the pose. Adding another little bit of soft brushing to the sketch layer for certain markings and decals and stuff. I need a bit more floof because Renamon is a very floofy character. If anything I've probably made it a little bit more floofy. The, the hair is, is kind of inspired by like tails and stuff with the little hair hair flicks and I decided against the lashes in the end. I think I wanted this character to be a bit more ambiguous gender wise. I, I Again, I don't really care about the, the gender of the character. I think I just decided to kind of make it a bit more subtle. And again, I went for like the pointy, the pointier downturned eye shape uh, a la Shadow the Hedgehog Blaze the Cat. But then the, the side of the face, the muzzle area is probably a bit more inspired by tails because Renamon is meant to be based on a fox. And again, I did the uh, the chest fluff base more so on Shadow's design. But I I'm always playing around with it. Like, I, I use the Sonic character as a rough guide on how I want the character to look, but I will always go off on my own little journey of exploration with reinterpreting these characters in this style.
tried to add to that curvature a bit more. Give give this random one design a bit of a booty. I do I do stand a nice booty. I'm basing the shoes more so on the sort of tails design with the the two color pattern rather than the three color pattern, or rather the two color pattern with the stripe in the middle. I always find the great thing with Sonic characters is that you can kind of get away with exaggerating proportions and stuff. There's not many characters where the hand is almost bigger than their face. But with Sonic characters, because they're quite... The, the sort of large round shapes, you can kind of get away with it. I think I think Sonic characters are a great... Well, Sonic fan art's a great thing to sort of get into to learn how to draw because you've essentially just learning how to put circles together in different different forms. Also, just drawing animal characters in general has just always been a fun subject matter for me. Like, even before I was aware of what furries were, I've always been interested in just how animators and artists interpret animals in their style. And going in with the colours, once again, loosely basing it on my own interpretation. With the eyes, I, I, I decided, because with the random one design in the Digimon artwork, they have these like black sort of irises, and then the blue pupils. I decided to try and keep that going with this design. Kind of reminds me more of, uh, is it Mephilus? And uh, I want to say Infinite in Forces, but I can't really remember how that design looks. Of course, this is not a game that's stuck in my head very well, I'll be honest. So I added in the markings, I decided to add the little zigzag lines on the, the cheek, much like the Redamon design, and then added the, the yin-yang signs. Obviously, they're all covered up, so you're only seeing a little bit of the, the yin-yang design. I quite like that motif, though. markings for the tail. Not nothing too complex. I tend to with 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 these zigzaggy patterns, I tend to block in the shape and then I use a smudge tool to create those zigzag patterns. More so for large areas. And then adding in the shading for the eyes, using a darker darker colour. I usually take the colour of the line art and then just change the transparency and then adding a glow. It gives the eyes a bit of an aesthetic I guess. And adding the same like ear tip colour as the tail and go in with the shading so same as before using that rim lighting and then going in with a soft airbrush it's kind of hard to see the rim lighting on the, like the muzzle any areas that have sort of off-white fur are kind of hard to sort of spot when I'm doing it but then they, they pop so much better when you add in the, the airbrushing Things that I would probably add the airbrushing in first, but I quite like using the the rim lighting as a guide as to where to put the airbrushing. And then change the transparency. And I decided to go in for like with like a purple hue for the airbrushing and change the layer style to multiply so it kind of darkens it up a little bit. It just means it plays a bit better with uh, different areas of different colours. It doesn't really matter because I'm pretty sure I use a colour slider to, to change it slightly. It's just about getting that layer down. That's why I do things on separate layers so then I can put them down and then if I want to make adjustments I can use the tools that the software has to change the overall mood and tone without affecting the rest of the drawing. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure, yeah, so I go in, change it. I, th I think I made it a bit more of a warmer sort of hue, more of a pink sort of color, but I love how it accentuated the uh, the fur and stuff. 
and then I decided to do a circular background, but then I thought, let's go a bit extra. Let's make it the yin yang sign, just to really keep that motif going. Obviously playing around with the translucency of it, because I still wanted that colour of the, the shape to be there too. And not to take away from the character design too much. like the finished result. So two out of two, I'm pretty happy with how all these look. I love how the highlights on the chest look as well with that pink colour. It really just changed the tone and kind of it kind of warmed it up a little bit, which I quite liked. But yeah, I'm really happy with the outcome and I think the design's really cute. I love the pose, I love how dynamic it is. I think all in all, a really good outcome. We haven't had enough scaly characters in this. What's some of my favourite Digimon designs? that come from the series have always been the more kind of dragony, lizardy looking characters. So for this one, I've gone for the one and only Flame Dramon. Let's go! So you know the drill at this point. Rough gesture drawing using a soft brush. I wanted to make him quite curvy because with him being like a lizardy character, I think curves sort of really accentuate that long lizardy tail. And of course, we're going to incorporate the armor that Flandremon has into this design. Honestly, Digimon has some of my favorite like anthro designs of any sort of modern media. Like they're kind of ridiculous, but they're kind of imaginative at the same time. Like nothing is too outrageous for Digimon. They can literally be anything. That often involves them having some form of bondage gear. I don't know why. They like the leather straps and their armor and their tank tops. I don't even know if you can call uh, Flandremon's top a tank top. It's more like a boob tube. Don't know why. Drawing in the pose at first and also for the gloves, I... For the show, Flandremon has these like claw things and so to marry that up with a sonic design the thing I had to base that on was of course the famous shovel claw from Sonic Adventure so I think normally Flanger one has just claws go all the way around the hands and it's like three like prongs on the claws but for this I wanted to make it more like the shovel claw so it's like he's wearing them on top of his gloves and then it's just the two claws for the raking motion. And I went through the effort of drawing in Flandremon's V. And I, I don't think I was going to put in the armor originally. And I was like, I can't just leave it at, at that. So then, yeah, we came in and added in the armor. Because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be Flandremon without it. It'd just be a long, tall V-mon otherwise. I had to be a bit more creative with the helmet, though. I had to just kind of make it sure it wrapped around neatly uh, with the muzzle design. But in the end, I, I'm quite happy with what I went with and I think it translates quite well. I tried to do the armour in a way so that the eye holes were kind of on a different plane than his actual eyes. So I've got gone for a thicker line for the eye shape of the armour and then done a thinner line underneath for where his eyes are actually like meeting with the armour. I just thought it created a little bit of depth and made it more like the armour is on top of him rather than it being part of him, like merged with his head. And I, I sort of made his muzzle, his mouth design a bit more dragony looking. So rather than it being like just a smirk that goes along the side of the face, I sort of brought that all the way around. So it created this soft muzzle shape, like a dragon muzzle. I think it works really nicely. I made the ears a little bit more rounded rather than pointy because they seem to be more kind of like floppy, floppy ears. And he's got his weird turtleneck, boob tube, tank top thing. I don't even know what this is anymore. But I, I dig it. It's a style. It's a look. Nice curved butt. So that's two. But two character designs where we've really curved that butt, but I think it, it it works. Look, never shy away from a good butt. Shoe 
design, I kind of did the, the two color sneaker again, but instead of it just being a line separating the two colors, I obviously made it the flame pattern instead, having the tail kind of tucked between the two feet, and obviously playing with the line thicknesses of the legs, making them look thinner so they're further back. those claw designs, keeping them nice and pointed, really exaggerating the, the extension on those claws, and then obviously making sure the fingers tuck neatly behind, using a thinner line again to show that there's a hand behind there as well. colors, filling in that base layer and using it as a, a clip, uh, like a background for the clipping mask. And kind of, I think with this I used the arbor as a separate base layer, so now I could use that to, I could use the clipping layers for the armor to add in the flames without affecting the rest of the character. and label all my layers so that if I do need to adjust anything I can do it easily and not go f sort of sifting through different layers trying to work out which color is which. Went for this like bluey purpley tint for uh, the leather straps. I never like using just plain grays and blacks and whites and stuff. I always like adding slight little color hues to them. I just think it really adds to like a tone, a mood to the piece. If you can have like off whites, off grays, off blacks, use a warm gray or a cool gray. I think just using plain black, whites and grays just isn't that interesting to me anymore. I used to do it way back in the day. And I think my art changed for the better when I started adding like slight little color hues. It also means if you have multiple different like parts of a character with grays and blacks, you can kind of separate them out a bit better by adding different color hues and stuff. And then we're using that clip layer that for the armor so that we can do the the patterns, the flame, flame patterns without affecting the rest of the drawing. It also means I can play around the color of any two. I do love the, the colour palette. I like how I like how on the original design you've got the blues uh, of the character and then it's offset with this like orange, yellow, red sort of colour. I think it works really nicely. Plus I've always liked this sort of blue colour, the kind of sort of cyan-y, teal sort of colour. changing the hue slightly on the colors just to see if I can get a different feel. Sometimes sometimes I'll do that and then I'll go back to the original color because I prefer it. It just depends on if I get a better feel, a different better mood out of the color. So I'm playing around with the the off-white color again. I think I tried to make it more kind of bluish to complement that and I think I went back to how it was before. So that's, that's what I mean. I sort of Try things out. If I don't like it, I just revert it back. That's, that's the benefit of doing things on separate layers with colors and things, is that you can adjust it without affecting the rest of the drawing, and then you can easily revert it back without upsetting too much. Maybe playing it a bit too safely, but that's, that is the benefit of digital, digital artwork. Traditional's where I go to have a play and take bigger risks. This is where I go to do stuff that I'm comfortable with and have professional have a professional outlook on it. Anyway, we are doing the shading as per usual, so going in with that rim light. I, I think I picked like a yellowy sort of colour because I figured that would complement all the other hues quite nicely. But obviously I can play around with the colour once I've done the rim lighting.
buried in with an airbrush, and then we've already adjusted the the translucency so you can see more of that yellow tint coming out, it's quite nice. I love how, how dramatic that looks. I think I did change the hue on this in the end. I think I just picked a diff slightly different colour because I didn't like how it was sitting on the blue colour. adjusting it to a more kind of pink magenta -y sort of colour but then I think I noticed I missed a few bits so I uh, went in with the same colour and then changed it again. Changed this bluey purpley colour which I thought looked really nice uh, or rather I think it's more like a magenta colour but it on top of the blue it kind of makes it more kind of purpley looking but I, I love how that looks. Uh, I think it looks really stylish. Yeah, with that we are we are done with the flamethrower one design. I think out of the three, this one's probably my favourite as far as colour goes. I think Renamon's my favourite as far as posing is concerned. So there we have it. We got three complete uh, Digimon to Sonic style conversions. I think all of them look great. All of them are very unique looking. I highly recommend giving this a try yourselves. If you're an artist, take take a, take a few characters and swap them into a style that you like the look of. Great exercise, really great, and you'd learn a few things along the way. And with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have any suggestions for characters that you'd like to see me convert into Sonic characters, please let me know. I will happily do a, a video where I take suggestions from viewers and convert them into a Sonic design. And maybe in a future video, I'll do a style swap into a different franchise. If that's something that interests you, please feel free to subscribe. Absolutely appreciate it. Or you can follow me on all the social medias. I am the same name across the board. That being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!